The movie opens up as a monk named Master Tang is on a journey to India to obtain the holy scriptures and bring them to China. He is accompanied by his disciples, the Monkey King, Sun Wukong, Baji, and Sha. On their journey, they have passed several tests, but this one will be the toughest one they have come across. During their journey, they travel across a river by boat. Everything seems to be going fine, but suddenly, a river monster emerges out of nowhere and attacks them. The group tries their best to defend themselves, but to no avail. As they are about to be eaten alive, a mysterious portal appears out of nowhere and swallows the group. When they reach the other side of the portal, they begin to fall at a very high speed. As they continue their free fall, Master Tang notices a beautiful woman, and it appears as if he has fallen in love at first sight. But before the group can decipher their location, the beautiful woman approaches them and inquires if they are men. Tang, who at this point is completely smitten, responds yes, but the woman walks away with only a smile. Shortly after, she arrives at a large kingdom, which is inhabited by only women. From the ministers to the workers, doctors to the librarians, everyone is female. Moreover, the beautiful woman is revealed to be the queen of the kingdom, which they refer to as Womanland. <laughs> Women are more creative than that. She approaches her servants and tells them about the men she encountered, but none of them believe her. It appears as if the kingdom has been isolated from the outer world, and hence, no one has ever seen a man in their lifetime. The queen continues telling her servants that she came across some men, but instead of believing her, they begin to suspect that she has become ill. Following that, they take out an ancestral book, which states that men are poisonous. However, its explanation is incomplete, because some parts of the book are missing. Just then, the king the kingdom's empress walks in and confronts everyone. She is the one who raised the queen and is in charge of the entire place. When she hears the rumors that some men have invaded their sacred sanctity, she orders her girls to find them. On the other hand, Master Tang, Wukong, and Sha are looking for directions in the forest, while Ba Ji comes across a treasure, a group of girls. He spies on them bathing in the river, because no movie like this would ever be complete without a bathing in the river scene, and he becomes excited. In the heat of the moment, he also transforms forms himself into a masculine man and approaches them. However, the girls capture and punish him, causing him to revert to his original avatar. Meanwhile, Wukong, Tang, and Sha are apprehended by a group of female soldiers. Master Tang forbids his disciples from using any violence and tries to defuse the situation peacefully, but the enraged women take them to their kingdom to receive punishment. This is when they finally realize that they have entered the kingdom of women, a kingdom where men do not exist. After reaching the kingdom's palace, they meet the woman they met before and realize that she's actually the queen. Then comes an elderly woman who displays an ancestral book in which a monk, a monkey, a pig, and a blue-skinned bruiser are mentioned. In the book, it turns out that the arrival of the monk and his disciples had already been predicted. Based on the prediction, this would bring destruction to this kingdom. As soon as the females hear this, pressure comes from various parties, especially from the empress, to sentence the men to death. The queen also agrees, but before that, she wants to interrogate them first. Although hesitant, the Empress agrees, and the men are imprisoned for one night inside the palace before the execution day. At this stage, Wukong, who possesses superhuman strength, can easily fight the women off and help his friends. However, when he remembers Master Tang's advice to refrain from violence, he decides to comply with the situation. The same night, however, Master Tang agrees to do a prison break. Wukong breaks the prison door, allowing them all to flee. At the same time, the Queen and her servants arrive at the prison for interrogation, but they are accidentally knocked out by the men. Once outside, the men try to fly back to their world, but it turns out that this kingdom is protected by an enchanted barrier that even the great Wukong himself can't penetrate. Realizing that there is no escaping the place, Wukong suggests that they speak to the queen, as she is the only one who can help them. Master Tang and the others also agree, and they return back to the prison. After a while, the queen and her servants regain consciousness and make their way to the prison. The queen decides to question the four individuals individually, so she questions Tang, while the other servants interrogate the remaining three. During the interrogation, the queen confesses that she is attracted to Tang, but the latter claims that he's a monk and cannot love the queen. He also shares that his sole goal of traveling to the west is so that he can obtain the holy scriptures, with which he can rid the world of its sufferings. He then hands her a travel log containing all of his thoughts and insights. As the two start getting friendly, Wukong interrupts them and inquires about the way out, and the queen promises to help them. 
them. Just then, the Empress arrives at the prison and announces that the men will be executed the following day. The next day, the men are tied with ropes and preparations for their execution are underway. A few moments later, the Queen arrives dressed as a soldier. It turns out that she has planned everything for their escape. She informs the men that she has replaced the sharp arrows with toy ones, and all they have to do is fake their deaths. The men agree, and the execution begins. The Empress orders her soldiers to shoot the men. At first, Shaw is shot, and he pretends to be dead brilliantly. However, when it's Tang's turn, he struggles to act, as he has been taught to never deceive others. Seeing this, Shaw cleverly throws a stone at him, knocking him out. Then, Wu Kong is shot. But during Ba Ji's turn, the Empress orders the soldiers to change the arrows. Being a man in this kingdom alone is a crime, but being an ugly one is an even bigger crime. Jesus. The writer of this has some priorities to sort out. As a result, he is attacked with multiple arrows. However, since Ba Ji is a demigod himself, he won't die that easily. After completing the execution ceremony, the Empress orders their bodies to be thrown away. At this point, everything is going according to the plan of the Queen. She manages to bring them to a safe place, which turns out to be a very sacred place in the Women's Kingdom. Right then, the Queen reveals that even she herself doesn't know how to get out of this kingdom, as for centuries, no one has ever tried to get out of this kingdom. But she believes that the missing fragment from the ancestral book may provide an answer. Hearing this, Wukong deduces that the missing page of the book is hidden somewhere around this sacred place, so they all begin to search for it. After a bit of looking around, Wukong discovers the paper and gives it to his master. Tang goes through the paper and discovers that the only way to leave the woman land is by understanding the meaning of love. As a monk, Tang admits that he doesn't know much about love, but just then, one of the servants reveals that she once heard about a love story in the kingdom of women. Rumor says that there was one girl who was very curious about what lies beyond the realm of women. Mysteriously, she then had a relationship with a water boy from the outside world because they were from different worlds. They were unable to meet in person and could only meet telepathically. Unfortunately, not much is known about the ending of their love story. Hopefully, they discovered FaceTime. Suddenly, Tang, Sha, and Ba Ji scream in agony as their stomachs swell. The queen congratulates them and reveals that they drank water from the river of the sacred place. The water has a magical power. Those who drink it will get pregnant. Moreover, it will only take nine days to give birth after the pregnancy. Being the only one who didn't get pregnant, Wukong is tasked to find a solution. Given the fact that they are men, it will be very difficult to give birth, so Wukong doesn't have much time left to save them. Fortunately, a servant informs them of a woman's location who possesses the abortion water. Wukong rushes to the said woman, but finds out that the process of making abortion water takes at least a hundred years. What the hell is going on in this movie? However, when Wukong starts pleading, the woman reveals that there is a shorter process too. She asks Wukong to touch her heart with true love and make her shed tears. Those tears Tears will be the abortion water that he wants. However, Wukong doesn't understand anything about love, as he's never been with a woman before. All he knows is the care and love Master Tang has shown him. Wukong starts narrating that long ago, he was a very chaotic person, until Master Tang accepted him as a disciple. From that day onwards, he promised to never let his master down and do whatever it takes to protect him. Unexpectedly, the woman considers the story to be a story of true love and sheds her tears. After retrieving the tears, Wukong bails on her immediately and rushes back to his people. On the other hand, Tang still hasn't come to terms that he will be giving birth to a baby. However, the queen tries to explain that the process is not a bad thing after all. She also mentions that performing an abortion is the same as killing. Hearing all this, Tang slowly starts to accept the reality that this movie has a political agenda and decides to give birth. Meanwhile, Wukong arrives with the abortion water, but Tang and the other men share their decision to give birth. Hearing this, Wukong is enraged as he believes that having a child will distract Tang from his goal, so he freezes them all and forces them to drink the abortion water. The water reacts fast, causing their stomachs to revert back to their normal selves. However, Tang appears to be displeased. To calm himself down, he goes away and copies the words from the scriptures on the ground. Ever since he was a kid, he has been using this technique to calm himself. The queen also joins him, and they both start writing stuff. Unfortunately, they are so caught up in the activity that they reach very far, and the empress spots them. She immediately orders her soldiers to arrest Tang, despite the queen begging her not to do so. But instead of being imprisoned, Tang is taken to the seashore. The coast is known as the Endless Sea, where if a person sails, he or she will never return. Shortly after, while Tang is being sailed away, the queen arrives on her deer and jumps into his boat. In no time, the boat goes far off the beach, and thick fog covers their surroundings. Now it seems as if they have lost their way.
away as nothing is visible. Meanwhile, the Empress is devastated because she believes that the woman land will be destroyed without the Queen. She immediately goes to Wukong and tells him what happened. As Wukong tries to understand the gravity of the situation, the Empress falls to her knees and begs him to save the Queen. This finally convinces Wukong and he sets out to find the sailing duo. However, this sea is named the Endless Sea for a reason. Even with the magical eye, Wukong can't manage to find them. Elsewhere, Tang and the Queen become stranded in the middle of the sea. The mist has disappeared, but as far as their eyes can see, there is only ocean. Although it hasn't been long since they entered the sea, it has felt like ages for them. The Queen becomes thirsty, so she decides to drink the seawater. But Tang stops her, claiming that it will make her even more thirsty. Eventually, Tang sincerely offers his flesh to be eaten by the Queen. This makes the Queen very emotional, but she refuses the offer and prefers to face all the challenges together. Besides, that's disgusting. After a while, a massive storm hits the sea, but the couple somehow manages to survive and spend the night. After the hurricane passes, their boat finally touches the mainland. It turns out this is what was meant in the prophecy, that only true love can open the exit gates of the female kingdom. The love shown by both of them has caused a giant gate to appear in the middle of the sea. This is spotted by Wukong and the rest, and they manage to find their master. Immediately, they invite Tang to leave the place, but Tang instead turns to the queen and invites her to go together. After a bit of discussion, the men enter the gate, but when the queen tries to step in, she is stopped by the enchanted barrier, indicating that she is not permitted to leave Womanland. When she tries to force her way through the barrier, Womanland and its inhabitants begin to transform into stone. The queen herself begins transforming into stone. Fortunately, Tang quickly grabs her and returns her back to normalcy. However, she collapses and loses consciousness. In the next scene, the water boy also notices the gate and quickly swims to Womanland where his partner lives. Elsewhere, as the Empress is caring for the Queen, she is reminded of the past. Several years ago, the previous Queen handed over a child to the Empress, claiming that the child has the bloodline of Womanland. The previous Queen also asked the Empress to raise the child the best possible way she can. It is then revealed that the girl who fell in love with the water boy was none other than the Empress herself. However, because she was tasked with taking care of the child, she had to give up her love for him. Meanwhile, Tang decides to stay in Womanland a little longer until the Queen is fully recovered. Right then, he is approached by the Goddess of Mercy, who enlightens him regarding the matter. She informs him that he must choose between these two, to love one person or all sentient beings. At the end of the conversation, she's confident that Tang will make the correct decision. Afterwards, he returns to the palace, where the entire kingdom is performing a ritual for the Queen's health. As everyone is praying, the water boy suddenly arrives and surprises the Empress. He has waited for 20 years for this moment and expresses his love for her. The Empress is touched by this, but she knows where her destiny lies, that is, to guide the Queen to lead the kingdom. Hence, she refuses to rekindle their relationship. Oof, the water boy deserved better. This enrages the water boy, and as a result, he decides to destroy the kingdom. Oh, I guess he didn't deserve better. At first, he kidnaps Tang and the Queen, but the amazing Monkey King immediately saves them. When his first attempt fails, the water boy transforms into a devil and starts attacking the kingdom. Wukong, Sha, and Baji team up to stop him, but all in vain. Soon, the water boy transforms into an even bigger form and begins drowning the kingdom. This destroys Womanland, and all the women fall into the sea. Witnessing such devastation, Master Tang, who is also drowning, enters a meditation state and prays to Lord Buddha to save the people. Surprisingly, the Lord hears his prayers and appears. He saves the drowning women and punishes the water boy for his misdeeds. Finally, the storm passes by, and life in Womanland becomes normal again. After a lot of enlightenment, Master Tang has finally made up his mind to carry out his duty and continue his mission. With a heavy heart, the Queen accepts his decision and also accepts her destiny to lead this women's kingdom. Finally, the four men wave a final goodbye to the Queen and set off on their journey to the West, hoping to find the Holy Scriptures. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.